how big, how important is the quest for a new drug that can treat neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's? You know, it's a huge quest. And first of all, you have to understand there are millions of patients around the world suffering from Alzheimer's and other debilitating neurodegenerative diseases. Probably the best way to understand that is to look at the existing market for Alzheimer's drugs. There are about six billion dollars worth of drugs sold today to treat Alzheimer's disease. And all of those drugs have one common characteristic, which is that they don't do much. So if you have a market of $6 billion for drugs that are really not terribly effective, it gives you a sense of the scope of the human challenge behind that number. So there is absolutely a, a vital quest to find a truly disease-modifying therapy in Alzheimer's disease. And of course, we believe that Davunatide, our, our lead product, has, has real potential to be that disease-modifying therapy. Now, Davunatide, you've mentioned, the drug that Alan is developing, has shown a great deal of promise in trials so far. We've had very successful both preclinical animal models uh, trials as well as, as human studies. If you look at the preclinical package, there is a very significant body of data there. I think at this point it's 35 different studies in 17 different models of Alzheimer's, cognition, memory, learning, and so on. Uh, some done in our hands, some done in collaborators' hands, some done in commercial laboratories, where we consistently see uh, a readout with this compound. So it's very exciting in that respect. It's more exciting to look at the studies we've done in humans, where in our Alzheimer's program we've seen a statistically significant improvement in memory function, working memory, and short-term memory. In our schizophrenia cognition program, we've seen a statistically significant improvement in the functional capacity of those patients to live independently. So can they manage their banking? Can they manage their transportation, their medical appointments, and so on? And also in that program, we saw a statistically significant improvement in an important brain imaging biomarker, so a, a marker of brain cell uh, function and integrity. So we've had some very encouraging data, and of course, we'll, we'll continue to follow that data as we go forward. Well, the principle in biotechnology is always follow the data. So where is the data on Divunatai leading you from here? Well, you know, absolutely, the, uh, the mantra has to be follow the data. And I, you know, I have to say, five or six years ago, when nobody really cared about what we were doing, we still follow the data then because the early preclinical data we had at that time uh, clearly demonstrated the potential for the compound. And we've consistently followed that data through time. And, and we've seen, a, as I say, very encouraging preclinical data, encouraging human clinical data. We know the drug works in humans. We know that it works in a way that's certainly relevant to Alzheimer's disease and a variety of other dementias. So we'll, we'll certainly continue to follow the data going forward. There's one particular area of disease which interests you in this, and that's progressive supranuclear palsy, or PSP. What's the potential there? Progressive supranuclear palsy is a debilitating uh, disease state. These patients are typically 45 to 65 years old when they first get diagnosed. And this is an early onset then uh, movement disorder and dementia. What's intriguing is that all of those patients have the so-called tau pathology as the underlying uh, pathology of that disease. And that's the pathology in which our drug appears to work. So first of all, PSP is as close as you can come to a homogeneous or, or not mixed population uh, in dementias as, as you could possibly find. They also decline very rapidly. The average time from diagnosis to death is a little bit more than three years. In extreme cases of frontal temporal dementia, of which uh, PSP is one type, you see patients lose about 15% of their brain volume every year. There is no efficacious therapy whatsoever. There is, however, a validated, well-understood rating scale that measures clinically relevant outcomes. So to us, if you put all of that together, you have a homogeneous population that declines rapidly, for which there's no efficacious therapy, and for which there is a well-understood and validated rating scale. It meets all of the regulator's criteria for what's called single study approval. 
So we're about to launch a pivotal study, the, the last study we believe we'll need before we ask regulators to approve this drug in progressive supranuclear palsy. And we're, we're very encouraged by it because we think it's a real glimmer of hope for those patients and, and an opportunity to bring real disease-modifying therapy to those patients. The path to drug approval can be long, demanding, expensive. So what partnerships are you making along the way? It is a long path. Uh, it is a demanding path. We've had the privilege of working with really some of the best people uh, in the world. So in the, in the Alzheimer's example, we've, we've had the privilege of working with Dr. Paul Eisen and his colleagues at the Alzheimer's Disease Cooperative Study, which is really the, the preeminent group in the world uh, focused on Alzheimer's disease. Certainly the National Institute of Aging in the United States, which funds the ADCS, has been very supportive of us as well. We've, we've had the honor of, of receiving fairly substantive grant money from them. Uh, the TURNS Consortium, which is focused on drugs for cognitive impairment and schizophrenia, has been very supportive of us, um, as has the National Institute of Mental Health in the United States, which supports the, the TURNS Consortium as well. And presently we're working uh, very closely, first of all, with our uh, founding scientist, Professor Ilana Gozes, and her colleagues at Tel Aviv University, but also with uh, the University of California, San Francisco, Drs. Bruce Miller and Adam Boxer, who are probably the leading voices in frontal temporal dementias and PSP specifically in the world. Great progress so far, but you have to take the long-term view with drug development. What are the next steps for Allon Therapeutics? Well, what you discover about the Allon team, first of all, is that we're absolutely focused on execution. If you look at the promises we made to our shareholders over the course of the last five years, we've done pretty well exactly what we told our shareholders we were going to do. So going forward, the first priority without question is initiating this uh, pivotal study in progressive supranuclear palsy, which we'll do over the next short period of time. Uh, there's also a, uh, a second generation product we're developing uh, that will focus uh, exclusively on Alzheimer's and uh, schizophrenia. There are other products in our pipeline. Uh, an interesting one that we'll look to uh, bring into human testing over the next year or so that has uh, shown quite uh, interesting promise in chemotherapy induced neuropathy or, or the pain associated with, uh, with cancer treatment. And there appears to be opportunities to work on, uh, on other compounds uh, as well. So there's, there's a lot to do, uh, but again, our, fo our team is absolutely focused on, on executing and the lion's share of our energy will go towards the uh, pivotal study in progressive supranuclear palsy.